Welcome back, and uh, what a delight to have in the studio with us, Patrick Doyle. He's a counselor with Veritas Counseling, and every time he's on the air, wow, <laughs> a lot of things happen. <laughs> and uh, we're here to talk about a subject I think that will be uh, pretty <clears throat> impacting to a lot of people. And it's a big one. I don't know if we can cover it in the short time we have, but it's called Unsafe Relationships. Mm -hmm. And um, you want to describe that? What well, is an unsafe <clears throat> relationship? I, last week I talked about, last time I was here, I talked about, um, one of the things I talked about was people denying their instincts or their spirit or their gut. Mm. And I got a lot of feedback on that. And so this is one of the main ingredients that allows people to stay in relationships that are unsafe is that someone that you're in a relationship is doing something to you that's harmful and you feel the harm. <clears throat> it's not extreme might be mild but it's consistent and you're like oh you start to you start to you're inside you're like oh that wasn't very nice or that wasn't right or oh they didn't mean it you start to rationalize you start to justify you start to deny the harm that that person is doing and then that gives them license it's all unspoken and then they keep taking ground keep taking ground keep taking ground until the person feels trapped they feel overwhelmed then they say something and the person who says something says something with more intensity than is, you know, probably appropriate because they've been holding it in. Then the person who's been harming them says, well, look at you. And they don't take any responsibility and thus the cycle continues. And so one of the things I see in the church, particularly, Perry, is that people, because of their Christianity, feel like they can't say anything that will cause a problem. Mm. And I'm here to say that the best and most loving thing that someone can do if they're in a relationship with someone who's hurting them, is stop them. If not, your whole life is filled up with uh, appointments of people who are on the other side of that. Exactly. I, I have a full calendar of people who have been mistreated. And here's the other thing I would say is a rule of thumb for someone who's in a relationship, they're, they're not sure what's going on or they think there's trouble, but they don't quite, they're not clear. Number one rule of an unsafe person is they don't ever take responsibility for anything. They rationalize, they minimize, they justify, they spiritualize, they deny. They never look you in the guy and go, you know, when I said X, Y, or Z to you, I was wrong. It was my fault. I'm broken. I'm convicted by that. I don't want to be that way. I'm going to change. And the motivation stays with the offender. The person who's being offended doesn't have to provide the motive for the other person to change. And what I see all the time is people get into this situation and the person that's being offended, harmed, is the one who has to always be responsible for making it okay. Yeah. That, that, so in God's economy, if someone's being harmful, doing something wrong to someone else, it's their responsibility to come to terms with their own sin, with their own wrong. And you can never be responsible for someone else's sin. Well, boy, you've opened up a can of worms. But I, uh, I, here's, here's the frustration I've learned through this, that when you first realize that there is an unsafe situation going yeah. on here, yeah. you're hearing it from one side. Yep. <clears throat> yeah. And you can be passionately drawn into it. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. I've learned, I thought, okay, I just got to take this a yeah. little bit and get the other side yeah. to find out who really is the offender here. Yep, exactly. Because if you don't... Mm -hmm. Uh, it could be a big mess. It could be a big mess. But I've seen it over and over and over again, Perry, where uh, the person who's the offender is particularly smooth. Yeah. They got a silver tongue. They can talk a blue streak, whatever, however you want to put it. Or they're avoidant. But they never yeah. actually take responsibility. <clears throat> if the person you're with is continually harmed, except for in rare occasions where someone is highly pathological, but then there's going to be all kinds of other problems. So, you know, is it when, when, so when, you're, in a, when you're in a relationship and you, and you feel unsafe, that's the first thing you have to take seriously. Look, let's vet it. What would be unsafe? I mean, what do you sense? Somebody, here? so here's, <clears throat> here's the classic scenario. Somebody that you're in a relationship with is liked by others. They're, they, have a, they have a good reputation among other people. They're, they're charming. They're kind to other people. The door shuts, and now they're another person. They're another person. And they, listen, they, they're, but they're, they never leave a mark. <clears throat> I wish sometimes people would walk into my office with a black eye. It would be like, okay, now we know what's going on. But when they, when they have all this harm that you can't, 
there's I don't have a video camera. Mm -hmm. I don't know exactly, but I always can tell the signs um, of someone who's being re re regularly harmed because they can never get any resolution. Here's a person sitting in my house who desperately wants to resolve the relationship, and they can't because the other person will never take responsibility. So it always leads back to that, is that is the person willing to take responsibility? Here's what I see a lot of <clears throat> that creates a lot of difficulty, is there's false humility. There's worldly sorrow. There's not conviction and repentance. Boy, we ought to do shows on those two right there. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Because if, if, <clears throat> if a lot of people are desperate for things to get back together, and so when, they, when, they, uh, when, they, when the person gives them that false humility, they're so desperate, they just take it in. But when they do that, the person who's the offender, the harmer, is emboldened by that. All right, so I'm also hearing you say that um, the offender won't take responsibility. Mm -mm. Nope. All right, so that ought to tell the, uh, the offended person um, <clears throat> that you're dealing with um, something that's going to escalate. Exactly. And, and see, but, but most of the time, here's the other side of that. <clears throat> because the person who's been harming them is always blaming them, undermining them, they start to doubt their own instincts. And when they start to doubt their own instincts, the, uh, the offender takes full charge. And so then, it's, I've seen it happen for years, where a person is trying to work it out, but they just keep getting overwhelmed by the person's accusations. You know, they, the, the offender says, well, that's not okay that you did that. And the person blows up and points the finger and says, well, you, but because and you, because and you. And then the person who brought it up is like, oh, no, and they back up. And now the person who was an offender is getting off scot-free. And so it escalates. But, you know, sometimes it gets to physical, the physical realm. But what I'm talking about is mostly emotional. And I've known situations where people are in relationships where that emotional abuse takes place for years. Mm -hmm. And no one knows. Yeah. Except for the person that's being offended. And maybe a couple of other people. But there's not enough evidence. Everybody's like, well, you know, maybe I there's nothing actionable. So it's not like there's a smoking gun. So everybody's right. like, I don't know. Um, if the person that's being offended doesn't do something, mm -hmm. uh, it leads to unbelievable damage, not it only does. to themselves, yep. but you're, you're, you're being complicit to the, to the other person, to the offender. That's right. But here's, here's the situation. Um, uh, I've had them in my office where they thought they were losing their mind. That, that's the other sign, Perry. It's the yeah. other sign. If you start to feel crazy in a relationship, yeah. I've talked to people who are very smart people, very capable people. But they just they, they, they can't handle it. And I they, mean, it's, it's and they, got them. they come in and they're like, I think I'm going to lose my mind. I think I'm going to lose my mind. And I'm like, here's my rule of thumb. Um, people say I'm confused. <clears throat> I'm, I, have a, I have a different definition for confused. So most of the people I talk to are very capable people. They can have a conversation. They can follow along. They come to the right conclusions. They're capable people. If you're confused most of the time when you have a conversation with one person, it's not because you're confused. It's because you're being manipulated. Okay, let me take a break there because uh, that's one of the other attributes of mm -hmm. an abuser, so to yep. speak, is yep. manipulation. Yep. All right, we're talking about unsafe relationships. We're not going to leave you hanging here. We're going to kind of give you some tools mm -hmm. on what to do yep. if you feel like you are in one. Right. Uh, we'll be right back with Patrick Doyle. I'm Paulina Lizer, producer of Focus Today. Thank you for watching this video, and make sure to check our other videos at thedov.us. Okay, we're back with Patrick Doyle. We're dealing with a subject called unsafe relationships, and he's done a pretty good job laying the foundation down on just what those are and how confusing and man manipulative they can yep. become. I've had people in my office that literally thought they were losing yep. their mind. That's they were happens. trying their best. Yep. They kept getting pushed back. Mm -hmm. um, and it's hard when the other person won't come in. Yeah. And so you're dealing with something. How much is mm -hmm. the person you're seeing adding to the problem? Mm -hmm. You know the drill. Yeah, I do. And so, but uh, manipulation. Yeah. Isn't that one of the big indicators? Yep, it is. But you see, for many people, it's hard because what they see is the person who's doing the, the harm, other people like. And so the, the, the person goes out in the community and they're just this great person. And then they come home and they're not. And so the person that's being offended or harmed is kind of confused, like, well, maybe it's just me. 
well, yeah, it is just you, but it's not you, it's them <laughs> that they're just mistreating. They don't treat other people the way they're treating you, hmm. which is why it's confusing because they're like, well, you know, and then so not, you add on top of that, the person who's doing the harm is undermining the victim on a regular basis emotionally. So many people always ask me, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? Well, the short answer is get away from the person that's harming you. You gotta have some boundaries. Isn't that the <clears throat> grenade in the campfire? Many times, but I can just tell you from lots of experience um, where people have left the manipulative ab abuser and it's two weeks and they can't believe how much peace they have. I mean, there's difficulty because the, the, the separation, but, but the fact that they're away from the person who's undermining them, they start to return to feeling better. Okay, i tell you another scenario that kind of plays into this. Uh, on a couple occasions, uh, I was the one that, and I'm not a counselor, I just get sucked into these things. <laughs> <laughs> so I just like, call him, don't call me. Uh, and that is that um, when I confronted the abuser, there was a total meltdown. They yeah. had no idea it was happening. They didn't see themselves doing mm -hmm. it. And uh, it, yeah. it, it seemed to stem back to a low self-esteem. Absolutely. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, you know, I think rarely, if the person claims faith, rarely are they unaware. Yeah. Uh, now, there are many people who claim faith that it's a complete lie. They, they don't. Okay. There's no. And I, given that definition, the ones <laughs> that I did confront were people of faith. They right. just didn't know. Yeah. And I would say, if you don't know and you're a person of faith, I got to question your faith because how can you mistreat somebody that long and God not tell you? So your denial system is very significant. And so then th I've had this discussion with mint, countless people where, you know, they're like, well, blah, 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 God, blah, blah, blah. God. I'm like, well, listen, <laughs> mm -hmm. if you're God's child, you living in abject unawareness of another human being that you're married to will not happen as a result of his spirit being in you. Mm -hmm. That's not how it works. <laughs> oh, well, so let's talk about why you don't see that. Let's exactly. Talk about, let's, exactly. Talk, let's talk about what you're denying. Bingo. Okay, so uh, until that person takes responsibility, there's, yeah. listen, I say this all the time. You, the Bible does not require reconciliation. It requires forgiveness. And forgiveness is a wholly separate entity thing from reconciliation. Mm -hmm. Reconciliation is only the result of the, of the offender having a conviction that has with it contrition. And this is something else I want to talk about real quickly. Is it Can look, I make a little addendum yes. there? That doesn't mean, um, doesn't take from the biblical term of reconciliation, which is reconciling people to Christ. Right, no, this That's is a, reconciling relationships. Okay, right. okay? So, thank you. But we all, I hear it all the time that, you know, because you're a Christian, you're required to s stay in the negative relationship. Yeah. That's uh, not true. Boy, then when you get them and I get them. Right, okay, so, if someone is convicted from God, not trying to mitigate, mitigate their, their uh, you know, consequences, they're convicted by God, that happens when God convicts someone, it's not because, they're other, because their spouse or the person they're harming is upset. It's separate from that, it's, it's a spiritual thing. With conviction, godly sorrow, as the Bible calls it, always comes contrition, mm -hmm. okay? Contrition isn't something we talk much about, <laughs> And frankly, it's kind of rare in my, in my experience. So contrition is this idea that I am so broken by what I have done in, in offending God and hurting the people around me that I am profoundly behaviorally, not words, I'm behaviorally motivated to show you the person I've harmed, behaviorally, that I'm so sorry and I'm different. Mm. And the motivation is in me. It's not something you gotta keep feeding. It's something that's in me. Mm -hmm. And so I tell this story all the time when, I, when God convicted me about my porn addiction and I got sober from that and I was sober almost a year and then I went back for almost a year and lied to my accountability group and all that. <clears throat> then I, convict, I, I, I confessed to my, to my wife a second time which I thought would be the end of my marriage. But one of the things that Catherine has said is that, that the fact that it was within me, it was my conviction, and she never had to manage any of that, that she saw God working in that, changing me. I was broken by it. 
I didn't want to do that. I was wrestling, okay? That conviction and contrition, behaviorally, she never had to ask me to go to a meeting. She never had to ask me to talk to anybody. She never had to ask me to pray about it. I was like, I got to deal with this. So that conviction signals to the other person that there's something good transformative happening within me, which then allows them to open up and start to trust a little. If you don't see that contrition, you have no business reconnecting or making yourself vulnerable. You have to keep the boundary up. And this is where it's so hard for people because a lot of their training is you don't do that. Yeah. What happens, um, what can you say to the person that they know that they're in this unsafe relationship? Yeah. But they're slowly becoming immune to it. Yeah. I mean, if isn't that a real warning sign? Yeah. Well, yeah, I see it a lot as people just become really despondent. They yeah. just kind of give up and they just feel hopeless and trapped, so, which would be another sign. <laughs> if you're in a relationship that brings you to hopelessness and feeling trapped, mm. that's not how relationships are supposed to make you feel. Right. That's not how. That's not the, supposed to be the end of the relationship. So. Yeah, because, you know, if you go up that ramp enough times to try to fix it, and every time you just get pulverized or turned away or disappointed or reconvinced how crazy you are for thinking that, you know, and I've, I've heard it a thousand times, every time the person brings up the issue, the offender turns it around back on them. Blame shifting mm -hmm. is one of the number one things they do. It's, you know, it's, um, I tell people, you know, they have responsibility Teflon Hmm. And you have responsibility Velcro. <laughs> you <know? laughs> so, that's you know, and, and if that's the case, that's a sign you're in an unsafe relationship. Now, un unsafe relationships, there is a spectrum, you know, mild, extreme. But if you're on the spectrum, that's a bad deal. <laughs> and eventually, if you, start with, if you start with mild, you're going to end up in a, in a much worse place. Unsafe relationships do not stay the same. They progress every time. Because people who are taking advantage of another person, that is a, a snowball that gathers, that gathers mass. And so the, one of the worst things you can do as someone is in a relationship with somebody who's <clears throat> taking advantage of you is give them power. All right, before we run out of time, what should somebody feels that they just wore out from this? They've yeah. put, been putting up from it. They may yeah. feel like they become immune to it. Right. It, it's easier. When we use the term, easier to stay in the relationship yep. and live under the same roof than yep. it is to confront it. Yep. But they're just running out of gas from it. You know, they're not looking right. forward to going home at right. night or whatever the situation may the be. Person coming home whatever. Um, what's <clears> the first thing they ought to do? Well, the first thing you got to do is is you got to talk to somebody who understands this stuff, mm -hmm. and you got to start getting some validation. And I, I've 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 done. I mean, I've been I've worked with people for one, two, three years before they're ready to confront mm -hmm. because they're so broken down, mm -hmm. and it takes me convincing them, really in the long run that what they're in, what they're seeing is true. Yeah, that's, that's that's if that's happening, that's the right conclusion. And then they go to the person they're with and that person undoes all that and then they come back and I'm like, "No, that's the right conclusion." Yeah. <clears throat> and so and the other thing about this is I've seen a lot of people in the church use scripture huh? to justify their harm of others. Well, that's that's Spiritual abuse on top of. So then we get into that, right? So now, not only is not only is the victim, you know, crazy for bringing it up. Now they're bad with God. So where are they going to go? So they're the problem. So now the person who's being harmed has no place to stand. So that's why you got to get with someone who can help help you vet out all those things you feel, because internally it's going to be really hard. And I've heard this hundreds of times, Perry, over the years from the benefit that you have provided with the, you provided the world with this benefit, uh, and I, I give you the credit, is you put up all these shows for free. You know, uh, owing to your argument before I came on about the, the LPT TV stations, mm -hmm. it's a very important thing. People say it all the time, you know, I, I heard you on the Dove, and I, when I heard you talk about this, it, it resonated with me as I have to do something about this. It was, a, it was me hearing me talk about somebody as being unsafe within a Christian context mm. is what got them to start thinking differently. Okay, and so having that connection 
is hugely important for the victim. They have to have somebody they think they can trust. Okay, because that was the point I really want to make clear here before the show. We run out of time, <clears throat> and that is if you feel trapped yeah. in this unsafe, uh, don't go at this alone. No, you can't. Seek somebody out that yep. you can trust, a yep. counselor. Uh, and you have to vet that trust, Perry. Yeah. They, you can't just blindly trust someone. You have, yeah. to, you have to slowly check them out. Because yeah. I've seen this, and I hate to say this, but it's true. Many times I've seen people go to their pastors, and their pastors completely mishandle it. And then it's worse. Yeah. Um, and it's not a short-term deal. And it's a serious thing. I and think it needs, it needs to be taken care of. All right. So um, <clears throat> if, if they go to someone and you vet the person that you're going to go to yeah. and unload this situation... Yeah. Is it working towards? Is it working towards a um, an encounter? I mean, so all of a sudden you're gonna. Is it heading towards an intervention? What's what's ha where is this going? It all depends on what the offender does. If the offender has any semblance of repentance, then we're going to work towards restoration. Mm -hmm. If the if the offender is just continued in the denial, rationalizing, minimizing, all that stuff, then we have to help set safe boundaries and see what God does. If God convicts that person, then we try to work towards coming together. If that person isn't convicted, we figure out how to live in a safe way, wait, waiting. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that means they, they, they split up. Sometimes that means they're just willing to wait. Just, it's all, it always varies. All right, so one of the hardest parts of this is if the offender is uh, at the same time claiming to be spiritual. Yes. That, that's the one you okay. really need some good yeah, counseling. It is. And here's the deal. You got 20 seconds. Behavior always tells a story. I don't care what you say. If your behavior isn't, isn't convicted, isn't soft, isn't changed by God, then the person who's being offended should not trust it. All right. Thank you, bud. You bet. All right. Uh, Veritas Counseling in Jacksonville. Thanks. Uh, we'll see you next time on Focus Today.